This is Kento Yamazaki. You may recognize him as L in the 2015 Death Note live action TV series, or you may recognize him as Kakeru in the live action film version of Orange, or as Kosei in the live action film version of Your Lie in April, or as King Enma in the Yokai Watch live action film, or as Josuke in the Jojo live action film, or as Saiki in Saiki K, or as Shin in Kingdom and soon to be bringing his lack of romantic charisma to the live-action version of Otakoi. Kento-san, Anato wa tomerare na kereba narimasen. Now, to be fair, not all of the films slash TV series that I just mentioned were completely terrible. Kingdom was actually serviceable, and the Jojo film was somewhat better than expected, although that's not too hard to do when the bar is set so low for this platform. But in each case, one thing remained constant. Kento Yamazaki's acting leaves a lot to be desired. But he's not alone, and he only highlights but one of the reasons why anime adaptations, and Japanese films in general for that matter, just plain suck. A limited talent pool, and a disturbingly limited amount of actual talent within that talent pool. Take for example, Masaki Suda, who has five live action anime films and one TV series, or Shun Oguri, who has three live-action anime films and three TV series, or Tatsuya Fujiwara, who has ten live-action anime films under his belt. And the majority of them are very, very forgettable. So how bad is the film and television industry in Japan? Well, let me put it this way. You know America's Razzie Awards where we basically shit on the worst films and performances of the year? Well, those would be Japan's Oscars. Now just think about it. How is an animated character somehow more tangible, more believable, than its human counterpart? Well, this is where I attempt to dive into the culture. So, despite making some seemingly positive strides in recent years, Japan is still very much an insular country, completely set in its ways, and societally speaking, they just have a really hard time in the face of change, regardless of all the potential upsides. And the same rings true for the entertainment industry. Whereas countries like the United States or France have super high or even elite standards or systems of training and education for actors, those standards are pretty much non-existent in Japan, and they're okay with that. Not only are they okay with it, they actively rail against any new thought or technical approach to acting. So in terms of technique in Japanese acting, everything is repetitive and predictable. From the movements, to the dialogue, to the way the dialogue is delivered, it's all very static and very stale. And when it does come time to actually emote, Japanese acting is plagued by its tendency to overdo it. And you would think that this would actually be perfect for adapting an anime or manga into live action form, but somehow these actors just get lost in the sauce. There's an obvious disconnect going on here, and the actors are just speaking their parts when they come up, as opposed to feeling them. Japanese actor Kanji Furutachi, who studied abroad, said that Japanese actors, quote, act, but they don't react. They just pretend to react. Now, having taken acting lessons myself while living in Los Angeles, I can say that this is the opposite of what you're taught. And that's why it feels as though actors like Kento Yamazaki aren't actually playing characters, but just playing themselves dressed as characters. But there's a very specific reason for this, which I will get to in just a few moments. But first, another reason you shouldn't hold your breath for a top class live action anime adaptation is because television and film are more of a business than an art here, and a dangerous business at that. The Japanese entertainment industry is closely linked to the Yakuza, as has been the case for generations since the war. So how does the Yakuza's presence factor in? Well, like I said, it's business first, and quality gets prioritized later, if at all. This leads to a lack of talent diversity, or a lack of talent, period. It's not uncommon to see a popular idol, or a Johnny, which is the male version of an idol, either heavily cast or even be in the starring role of a TV show or film. Being that the Yakuza also have ties to the idol industry, and likely to Johnny's as well, it makes sense that they would want to maximize their yin by showcasing these boy and girl band personalities who have huge followings and will pay any amount of money to see them, and placing them into the TV and film side of the industry. 
Think AKB48's Minami Takahashi screaming at the top of her lungs in the absolutely terrible Attack on Titan film, or Yuki Yoda from Nogizaka 46 just taking up space in the Mob Psycho 100 live action series. Now I want to go back to my point of actors seeming totally disconnected from their characters or the source material because this ties into the corrupt nature of the industry as well. So in short, there's not a lot of money in the industry if you're a model or an actor. The agencies themselves on the other hand are doing very well. They lock their talent into lifelong, slave-like contracts and run them into the ground while the agency heads collect the majority of the cash. I wouldn't be surprised to see an actor have two films released in the same month while also having a weekly series airing on TV and then find their face plastered all over ads on the train and television promoting a new food product, smoothie drink, or clothing line. When you have to do so much, it's almost impossible to fully immerse yourself into a role and truly embody the character you're portraying. This is the result of Japan's emphasis on quantity of work over quality of work. Overwork is a central theme of life in Japan, and the entertainment industry is no exception. These models slash actors slash product endorsers have to bust their ass just to remain relevant, and it's the work that suffers as well. In fact, the real money is in TV ads, while films and dramas only bring in peanuts to help pad their bank accounts. So yet another reason actors obviously aren't giving their all on the big screen. So what's the solution to make anime and manga adaptations and Japanese films in general better? Well, it's not an easy answer. When you take into account the self-serving politics of the agencies and the production companies that really are just an extension of the agencies, combined with the low quality of acting ability among the talent pool, which is only matched by the equally abysmal quality of cinematography, special effects, and overall production value, Japan has a tough road to climb to reclaim the glory of the Kurosawa era. Meanwhile, South Korea, China, and even Taiwan are blowing right past them. And it's not as simple as giving America the rights and letting them run with it with a heftier budget. We've seen the results in Ghost in the Shell, Death Note, and Dragon Ball Evolution, just to name a few. Alita Battle Angel was a step in the right direction, but we've still got a long way to go in how the West approaches and interprets Japanese material in a way that serves Western audiences with respect to the original work and doing so with consistency. But now I want to know what you think. Do you actually enjoy live action anime and manga remakes? If so, why? And if not, what would you do to fix it? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to know which live action adaptations don't suck, click the box in the top right. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be back very soon. But until then, sayonara, suckers.